The Saudi Pro League is determined to be a success and will continue to spend money on bringing in some of football's top stars. Clubs in the oil-rich Gulf state have attracted global stars with Karim Benzema, Jordan Henderson, Neymar Jr., Robert Firmino, and Sadio Mane, among those following in the steps of Cristiano Ronaldo. The inflow has occurred despite repeated accusations that Saudi Arabia's lavish spending is due to sports washing in a bid to gain access to the world's top leagues. The Saudi league is ambitious and driven to win. There is a long way to go before the league reaches the top five, as Cristiano Ronaldo believes it will. It can't have escaped anyone's attention that, at present, the Pro League is only the 68th best on the planet. To put that in some kind of perspective, they are significantly poorer than England's League One, which is 63rd, the Peruvian Primera Division, 52nd. There are natural comparisons drawn between the recent rise and fall of the Chinese Super League to what's now going on in the Saudi Pro League. Here are five reasons why Saudi Pro League will not end up like the Chinese Super League and will be a resounding success for the country and its people. 1. The Money No point beating around the bush. If the SPL becomes one of the most popular leagues in the world, money will be the most influential factor. The Chinese Super League, during its peak, experienced a gold rush of sorts. President Xi Jinping said he had three football wishes, to qualify for the World Cup for a second time, host it, and eventually win it. Big business, especially property developers looking for political benefits, got involved, taking over clubs and paying over the odds. However, the anticipated political influence failed to materialize, as the Chinese political system proved intricate and unpredictable, and it eventually led to its decline. In contrast, the Saudi Pro League project under the Saudi Public Investment Fund, PIF, follows a distinct strategy. Saudi Arabia, an autocratic state laden with petrodollars, seeks to extend its influence globally. The PIF is the kingdom's sovereign wealth fund, and with assets of $320 billion, this is one of the largest in the world. It was announced that Saudi Arabia's public investment fund has taken over the four big clubs in the Saudi Pro League, namely Al-Hilal, Al-Itihad, al Nasser, and Al-Ali as part of the kingdom's sports club's investment and privatization project. The Chinese state did not direct CSL clubs to spend crazy money. That was all down to the private entrepreneurs who got into football because they wanted to show fealty to Xi's reform policies and or to gain advantages for their business interests. The PIF's significant financial backing, combined with the country's political structure, sets it apart from the Chinese Super League the Saudi Pro League aims to enhance the league's image and establish itself among the world's best. 2. The Players It may be stating the obvious, but the players recruited by the SPL are its greatest asset. There are athletes from 40 nations competing in Saudi Arabia. The Chinese Super League's great snares were Oscar, Hulk, Alexander Pato, Carlos Tevez, Paulinho, Didier Drogba, Nicolas Anelka, and a few more. These were players of great talent who made the move east, but none of them were once the winners of the Ballon d'Or. The likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Karim Benzema, Neymar, Roberto Firmino, Nicolo Kante, Jota, Ruben Neves, Fabinho, Sadio Mane, Seco Fofana, Riyad Mahrez, and many more, signing for the league has been an avenue where the Pro League is merely one of the last competitions standing that is prepared to pay veterans what they think they deserve. The players now in the SPL have international reputations that extend beyond the league and those of its clubs. Cristiano Ronaldo is clearly bigger than his employer, Al Nasser, something that was never the case with Real Madrid, Juventus, or Manchester United. But one of the greatest names in the game appears to have accepted that his contract comes with a responsibility to promote the league, and he has assumed the role of club figurehead. When he accepted the 31st title of his career in lifting the Arab Champions Cup, he not only made a great show of how much it meant to him, but dictated the celebrations, bringing the club president and head coach to raise the trophy with him. This is a powerful message, especially in an age of star-driven sport, and other leaders such as Karim Benzema at Al-Itihad, Neymar at Al-Hilal, and Jordan Henderson at Al-Etifak will likely imitate it. 3. 
the national team quality. The Saudi national team have qualified for six of the last eight World Cups, and though Hervé Renard's side did not escape the group stages in Qatar, they did claim an almighty scalp in victory over Argentina. The performances of Hassan al tambakti and Salem al dawsari pointed to homegrown quality in the league. Saudi Arabia is better placed than China, and not just because there is a lot more money around. PIF has more than 500 billion pounds. On the pitch, it is already a continental powerhouse beating China 6, 1 in World Cup appearances, 2, 0 in Asian Cup titles, and 6, 3 in Asian Champions Leagues. Even before this new influx, the league had the best foreign players of any in Asia. In terms of international exposure, it is also no contest. Famous players went to China and virtually disappeared on the other side of the Great Firewall. Ronaldo, the ultimate influencer, keeps his 600 million Instagram followers fully updated as to what he and his family are up to. Other stars will do the same. 4. Investment in Infrastructure In order for the Saudi Pro League to be considered one of the best in the world, there will need to be proper investment in infrastructure. Fortunately for Saudi soccer, Commitments have already been made in advance of hosting the 2027 Asian Cup, with 10 new stadium construction and renovation plans being announced. However, club infrastructure is more than just new stadiums. There will need to be proper investments in training facilities, academies, player performance infrastructure and more. Some of the smaller clubs outside of Riyadh and Jeddah have quite poor stadiums and aging infrastructure, which will need to be addressed. There's no reason the Saudi Pro League can't have best-in-class academies and youth development infrastructure that draws some of the top talent from across the Middle East and North Africa. A league is only as strong as its weakest clubs, and for the Saudi Pro League to compete on a global stage, there will need to be proper investment in long-term facilities and infrastructure to match the investments being made on the pitch. 5. Transition away from aging superstars one of the more interesting developments of this summer transfer window so far has been the signing of 26-year-old Wolves midfielder Ruben Neves by Al-Hilal. While the majority of the players moving to Saudi this summer have been at the back end of their careers, Neves is in his prime and a starter for the Portuguese national team. As the Saudi Pro League matures, the profile of marquee players must evolve to be younger and more in line with some of the top leagues in Europe. A good case study would be Major League Soccer's MLS transition over the last five years from a league of aging stars to a hotbed of young talent, both domestic and from South America. No league can consider itself world-class if it exclusively focuses recruitment on older players at the end of their careers. While the strategy is sound, if the goal is to build interest in the league, and raise the quality of soccer in the short term, in the medium to long-run administrators in Saudi will need to pivot to a more sustainable recruitment philosophy. It's too early to tell how much of a serious global player Saudi soccer will be in the coming years. However, the early signs indicate a strong appetite for investment in the sport, and a sustained interest in making the Saudi Pro League one of the top leagues in the world. With proper investment in infrastructure, a savvy focus on human capital and a long-term, sustainable recruitment strategy, there's no doubt this league can be a serious global player for years to come. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.